he was a certified like killer. Yeah. It's the city of bottoms. People didn't really want us there. I mean, we're in their country. I wouldn't want us there either. It was don't ask, don't tell, but hot guys, ripped guys, testosterone. Where do you think it was like the most sexual place, you would say? It's a very closeted community. Homophobia in the army. Those men have some huge... Mm -hmm. okay. Everybody in Europe's <laughs> uncut. It's just beautiful. Just... I was living my, my gay fantasy. All right, guys, welcome to my channel. Today is not a very, very typical video because today we're talking about gays in the military. I'm here with my friend, Mr. Blaine O'Connor. We just met here in the Av Avian Awards, and he had a very interesting story about what it's like to be gay in the military because what countries you went to? Uh, I've been to Afghanistan, Germany, and Spain. Germany and Spain is very typical. I feel yeah. like a lot of like military people I've met who went there. Yeah. Afghanistan is not that much. No. So we will go deep into details. Please make sure you go to his Instagram and follow, and he has also a VIP page. Mm -hmm. He quite a change of job he did. Like yeah. So big it's a big change. Before we go into like like um, military stuff. What age you knew you were like gay? Like what time, when did you realize? Oh, uh, well, I was quite young. I was actually like 12 years old and uh, I knew I was gay, mm -hmm. but uh, I knew I lived in Omaha, Nebraska. So it wasn't like the most, not like accepting, but it just, yeah, like a culturally accepting place. Granted, my, my parents preached love and they didn't care when I came out, but That's it was nice. just a very... It was interesting growing up because you see, like, you know, every every family has, you know, the dog, the wife, the kids. And I'm over here looking at Calvin Klein models. <laughs> <laughs> like, ooh, he's so got Did you went to underwear model, uh, underwear aisle? Yeah, I would go to the Coles uh, in the Macy's and my mom would be like, where did he go? <laughs> and I'd be, I'd be off in the, uh, like, oh, look at this guy. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, who's that guy? <laughs> it's, so, it's so funny. I had Jean-Claude Van Damme po poster oh. and that was, like, my celebrity crush on Gay Awakening. I was five years old. I legit, I legit knew I was gay. But but anyway, so you knew pretty early. Oh, and you said you, when you came out, they were pretty supportive as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Very supportive. I have my, fam I, my family is amazing. Great family. I'm o very lucky. Overall in Omaha, is there like a lot of gay people there? Like, do you feel like open? Um, it's a very closeted community, but there's quite a few. It's out. It, everything is becoming more acceptable, which is nice. But... Are they hot? <laughs> uh, problematic question <laughs> uh i mean if you're into like you know farmers and like beer bellies and stuff you know hairy bears i mean yeah they've okay. got they got a plethora of that okay, okay. <laughs> okay. not la gays not la okay types. got it but they're nice people they're all good people when did you realize you want to go to military because you knew you you also knew you were gay like, what was behind your thoughts? Because I was, like, even scared to go to the bathhouse with my straight friend because I thought I'm going to get horny. And you decided to go to military, you know? Well, my dad was military. He was a uh, scout sniper, actually. So he was a uh, he was a certified, like, killer. I said, well, I don't really know if I want to do that. But I still wanted to kind of follow in the footsteps of my dad. So I did something a little bit less uh, extreme, <laughs> to say the least, but still something that I felt good about. So I could follow in my dad's footsteps. Mm -hmm. What age was it? Oh, 18, right out of high school. Okay. Immediately. So you joined the military. Where did you go first? Uh, first, I went to Chicago for boot camp, and then after Chicago, I went to Gulfport, Mississippi, and then after Mississippi, I went to Texas, and then Texas, I went to California. And? <sighs> Afghanistan, from Afghanistan, went back to California, California to G Spain, Spain to Germany, Germany to Virginia, Virginia back to Nebraska. Okay, I uh, have... Three years. That's pretty a lot. Yeah, I have a quick question. Good. Afghanistan. What, what year was it? <sighs> it was uh, 2009. So it was pretty fresh after. Was it fresh after? Yeah, it we was, got there. It was pretty. It was pretty nasty. It yeah. was. It was a very. Uh, it wasn't the most fun. Okay. I mean, we had fun. We made fun. Trust me. But the conditions weren't ideal. <laughs> what were the conditions? It was very hot, mm -hmm. and it was very hostile. People didn't really want us there, and I mean, we're in their country. I wouldn't want us there either. But I mean, we were there for trying to build peace in the Middle East, which... It did not work. It didn't work. It's yeah. okay, though. Okay. What kind of conditions do you mean by hostile? Is like, besides that people were didn't really want you there. Like, uh, you mean you guys lived in a bad conditions? Yeah. So we would live in these, they call them connex boxes. And mm -hmm. it'd be um, it'd be like a connex box, like a, like a crate that you'd see on a, 
um, you know, those big boats. Yeah, mm-hmm. We would live like eight people in those on bunk beds. It'd be about 120 degrees outside. So it would just be, you know, a bunch of hot, sweaty dudes, you know, trying to stay cold and uh, doesn't work in 120 degrees. So you would just kind of cook like a little cookie. Out of all your military places, where do you think it was like the most sexual place, you would say? Like... Oh. Afghanistan, for sure. Was it Afghanistan? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, so a lot of people say there's a lot of gay guys in the military. How true is it? Like, how, like what percentage you think they were, like, doing stuff? Uh, a lot. It's actually funny from what I do now. I've actually had people that have hit me up from the uh, my battalion, and they're like, oh, my God, I had no idea. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, I had no idea you were gay. <laughs> so it's a, a large number of guys. I mean, you have... You know, hot guys, ripped guys, testosterone. What do you think's gonna happen when there's no women? Someone's got to fill the need. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to be there for him. I want to know. Give me like hot story from Afghanistan that you remember, like that you guys messed around. So we had a barber, and we would go to the barber shop get a haircut and uh, you know you come back a little bit later after he's done working and you could probably get you'd get you know you'd have a little fun after that with the barber and then uh, we would go to the Brits side because the Brits the British were there the Jordanian and uh, you know you go over there with them and you do a little project for them and you'd see them like because they could drink so they were having a lot more fun than we were mm-hmm. so you'd go over and meet you them and drink oh no we couldn't drink oh no I mean people would but it was uh, Deal. Yeah, you get in a little bit of trouble. But um, you'd go over to the British side and the Jordanians, and uh, and they would just be, uh, you know, they'd be doing things, and you're like, oh, God, I wish I could join them. Like, you'd see them jerking each other off in the showers, and you're just like, oh, man. If Open, more openly, you feel like? Oh, yeah. They're way more comfortable with their sex than we are. Like they're Even fr- Jordanians? Uh, I don't think as much. I don't, th- <laughs> I don't think there's, but I'll tell you what, those men have some huge, mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Very, very nice. So y- you mean the barber, was he bottom or top? or? What? Oh, he was this very, very large man, and he had a very, very big, mm-hmm. so you, yeah. So you would, yeah, you pretty much get. And he was from Afghanistan? No, he was a, uh, he was part of the Navy, but he was, he was detached to us, kind of like sent to us from like big Navy. So uh, he would, Pretty much, that's his only job was to cut hair and pump holes, apparently. <laughs> also, you told me yesterday a story for the short video, which if you guys didn't see, you can go and watch it, but the showers story. Oh, yeah. What wasn't happening in the showers there? Because that's one of my fantasies, Linda. Late nights, we would have a couple guys would go to the showers. You didn't really know who was behind the the curtain. Sometimes you kind of figured, you kind of knew who it was, but you never, you couldn't actively talk about it because mm-hmm. it was don't ask, don't tell. But yeah, you'd go into the showers, it'd be hot, it'd be steamy. You'd go in there and uh, there'd just be, you know, some guy's butt just kind of poked out from the curtain and you just kind of pump and dump and go. And, you know, sometimes you'd be the guy in there and sometimes you'd be the guy on the other end. How would you arrange it? Who would you arrange it? Um, we kind of had like just an un like an unspoken thing like somebody would be there kind of like you know how you have sniffies now okay so kind of like kind of like uh old school sniffies people would just show up they just knew to be there okay because somebody had to fill the fill the need you know what i mean i, I get hot. it it was just like it was humid it was hot in there and you know the heat from the the day and it was just so hot inside of the showers it's just like You couldn't beat it. It's just like some of the best. It's like a bathhouse in there, and it's just so hot. Any experience with Afghanistan men there? For the most part, we were told to stay away from them, so we did not interact with them very much in general, unfortunately. No gay clubs in Afghanistan. <laughs> Where I was, there wasn't anything but mud huts. That all sounds like a fun story. Did you witness like homophobia in the army? No, not at all. Actually, uh It was don't ask, don't tell. So if somebody actually asked you, like, hey, are you gay? Uh, you could act, they could actually get in trouble because it didn't matter if you were gay or straight as long as you did your job well. Mm-hmm. Nobody cared and nobody should care. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So no, no issues at all. No, not for me. But I mean, who's gonna say something to me? Okay, we got Afghanistan was the hottest spot for you mm-hmm. in all different topics. Between Spain and Germany, mm-hmm. where the guys you like more? Because that's Europe, you know. Uh, Germany for sure. Actually, I don't know, man. More skilled. 
Uh, I mean, it's so hard because you have guys in Germany, they're hot, and you have guys in Spain, they're very hot. And guys in Spain, you know, you have the beaches, everyone's wearing a Speedo, so it doesn't really leave much to the imagination. You kind of already know what's going on. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, wow, okay. And it's like, you know, everybody there is like uncut. Everybody in Europe's uncut. <laughs> it's just beautiful. They just all have beautiful penises. <laughs> so it's just gorgeous. But, oh, my God, I don't know. I don't. I, I can't say which one I liked more because... You, you were having the time of your life and both. I was living my my gay fantasy in the closet. Like, so now you do OnlyFans. Oh yeah. So you've been doing it for three years. You said yeah. before. Just like before we finish the video, what's one best thing about it and one worst thing about it? Uh, the best thing about OnlyFans is having the absolute freedom to do what you want with your page and. Travel. You can yep, and you can make quality content. You can work with who you want to. You can express yourself exactly how you want to, which is amazing. You know, when you work with a corporate job, you kind of get locked into what they want you to do, and it's it gives you a lot of freedom. It's liberating, extremely. Mm -hmm. it's a little taboo, but you know who cares? It's twenty twenty four. Uh, worst part, um, professionalism. There's not a lot of people that are super professional about it. And it's, it can become daunting from time to time when you try to get collabs, you know, people show up on time or people are like prepared properly. You know what I mean? I don't know if you know what I mean, but yeah. so, all in all, I'd much rather do what I'm doing now than, than have working for a corporate company. Do you see yourself doing it in the next 10 years or like, do you think that you're going to save money, invest and in, like, how do you see yourself? Well, I've already bought a house. Period. Congratulations. Where? Uh, in Austin, Texas. Oh my! I lived in Austin for a year. Did you? Yeah. It's, really cool. it's the city of bottoms. It is. There's a lot of bottoms <laughs> yeah. there. Uh, I'm working on a second house in Mexico. Okay. Uh, for my vacations, so I can go somewhere and just kind of break away. And it's super inexpensive there. It's great. It's beautiful, and everybody there is hot. So, but um, I don't know. In ten years, I can't say. I mean, it's who knows tomorrow. You will adopt. Tomorrow, I could be irrelevant. Yeah. So you never know. But for now, I'm going to ride the coattails of what I'm doing and enjoy my life. What do you mean be irrelevant tomorrow? Like in what, what terms? Well, because there's always somebody younger, hotter, fresher. Yeah, I think that's an interesting part that no one talks about. Yeah. About like staying relevant is one of the hardest part, I feel. Oh, yeah. Because like there is always new people. Well, so you have to stay relevant and it takes a lot of like evolvement. They always say in the industry, somebody turns 18. Somebody new yeah, turns 18 every, yeah. every day. Or every, every day. day. Yeah. Yeah. So... Me, trying to keep up with them. But you have a daddy vibe, though. Yeah. So they're not going to... No, know. They, they've got... I've got years on them. Yeah. And experience and a brain. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the brain is a very important part because it's like the last thing that I told people so many times, if you think that all you have to do is just get on all the fences and take off your clothes... Mm -hmm. This is the least, like, this is the smallest part of the thing in order yeah. to be successful. The marketing yourself, that's, like, pretty hard way. Yeah, the marketing. Against all of those TikTokers. And yeah, the marketing is the hardest part because, yeah, like you said, anybody can take their clothes off, but can you take your clothes off and look good, but also not look good, but be presentable, be approachable, and be a person that they can actually get behind as a normal individual? Yeah. Do you know? All right. So thank you so much. Uh, make sure you please uh, follow Mr. Blaine O'Connor on his Instagram and VIP page. Thank you. I hope <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. And also, please let me know if you have any questions for him for being in the military as a gay man. Because maybe we will, you know, it's a small world. I'm yeah. gonna be traveling for Texas because uh, there's a photographer there who lives. I like. Trey. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he took a good pictures of me. So um, period. <laughs> so maybe we'll film a second part. You know, maybe I'll ask him some more dirty questions about you know stuff. Thank you so much. Smash the like button if you didn't do it. Thirst trap. Please, <laughs> ma <laughs> please make I'll sure. <laughs> So make sure you please smash the like button and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.